Flos Tube, it's Lee from Creative Lee on Sunday the 8th of January 2023 with Flos Tube number 159. Welcome, welcome back to my weekly instalment of Counted Cross Stitch Fun and um, Randomness. Uh, yeah, I just don't know where the week has gone. Um, I had a huge list of things, great intentions, didn't do a lot of them. Well, the weather got a bit pants, so it's been sort of wet and wet for a lot of the week, cold for a lot of the week, it's been very strange, so um, even right now it's a bit chilly, but um, because I get hot, hot flushes, I have to have the window open, <gasps> such fun is perimenopause, but anyway, um, yeah, I have a new tripod as well, My I went to visit some friends, um, and my friend Richard said, oh, happy birthday present, even though we don't really do birthday presents, but he had bought, seen on my YouTube channel, which is a bit funny that people were watching, anyway, funny when people you know watch you, if that aren't necessarily cross stitches, because that's a bit odd, but anyway, hi Richard, um, bought me um, a new tripod, because of course I've been complaining that my tripod wasn't up to the job, but every time you cr start the video, you're like, oh, bloody tripod, kept slipping, so my camera, my phone kept slipping slowly forward, the little toggly thing wasn't tight um, and then of course finish the video by the time you've edited and uploaded it completely goes out of my mind until next week when I go to film another video and the camera was slipping so um, I went around to visit them I don't even remember when during the week I think and yeah um, Richard had picked up a little tripod for me so it's a bit fancy it swivels a whole lot of different ways as well mine was just literally hold the phone um, so this is a bit cooler anyway um, and so far not slipping yay and um, he did also buy me a little ring light but I haven't set that up because um, not quite ready to do a ring light um, it's a little bit a little bit too influencery for me but um, also it has a USB port and I would have to get something to plug it in like my computer and I'm lost just not ready to do that so um, maybe in a week or two I'll fiddle around and see if I can get that working um, or if get that to work for me I don't even know I've never used one before but certainly it might help show the colors of the fabric and everything better we need to give that a bit of a go anyway what's been going on um I don't know as I said just stuff um, catching up with a few people a little bit of admin, um, you know, just sorting out my life. Didn't sort out my life. Talked to Dad this morning, stopped feeling great. Just ongoing, general, you know, poor health, really. Um, he'd gone back to bed after he'd had his home care there this morning. And then while I was talking to him, he got up because he thought he might. He's been suffering from some, you know, um, morning sickness, let's call it, for want of a better word. Um, yeah, so he just wasn't feeling that great. So I said, well, I'll let him go back to bed and rest and I will talk to him later and check in on him. But it's just, yeah, not feeling really all that flash. So poor old dad. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think, for the life stuff. I mean, back to work for a full week tomorrow. It's gonna be, gonna be a shock. I need to set the alarm. I did get a little bit of happy mail this week, which is really lovely. This beautiful card, it's hard to see, but it is um, embossed, so it's beautiful texture um, and just a lovely little note. So this um, Cherry Parker, who is a cross-stitch designer here in New Zealand, and she just um, reached out, basically just sent me a few little bits and pieces that she, of stuff that she's not gonna use. So some little small cuts um, of, fabric it's all 25 count Lugana I think she said that's her favorite count of fabric is from um, it's all from Country Stitch but um, anyway she just said she's not going to use them so she sent them to me to either use or pass on so at this stage I'm just going to put them in my stash they may be shared in the future but just some quite bright colors so what's interesting is the colors that I don't usually go for when I do my samplers and things. However, 
they may be useful for my little smalls that I'm doing a year of smalls and things. So they're all 25 count Lugana. This piece is black currant. So obviously if you did this on uh, linen, it would be darker, but that's black currant. Uh, this one's similar, but different, royal tea. Uh, the blue is Bay of Islands. So the Bay of Islands is up north, um, up the north part of the North Island. Very lovely holiday destination to go diving and fishing and enjoy the tropical climate and then tropical ocean, which is probably that colour. And then um, she included a couple of cottage garden threads that she said she wasn't going to use. So this is lovely, Bonnie Brook and French Lavender. And this one didn't have a card, so just a pale, little pale gray, light grey and blue, light blue. So yeah, they'll just be put aside. Um, thank you, Cherry, for that. I also got my silks for you come through. They must have been a little bit late coming into New Zealand this last month um, because they didn't come with my Rainbow Club last week. But uh, this is the colours of the month, which I think this is the last month. Which month is this? No, this is November. I think I paid for December. I'm ca I've cancelled the colours of the month for 2023. This is the four by 15 metre skeins, just because I have a lot, and I need to use, especially the variegated ones. I don't use a lot, and we get usually often two of them each month. Um, so so I've basically cancelled this month. Um, but the colours are. Sorry, I've cancelled this club for 2023, but I'm keeping on with the other club. Uh, we've got PR168, PR173, PR187. I do like that variegated brown though, and PR162. So that's the yeah, silks for you colours of the month. And then the silks for you, silks of the month, which are the custom dyes. Um, you're definitely keeping that club going. They're the ones, they're five by 10 meter skeins and often uh, either five, yeah, you know, always coordinated, but usually um, in families, these are a little bit different. They're a little bit variegated, but of course shades of sort of caramelly browns and orange, very useful for me. And they're just numbered, um, one through five for November 2022. So. so first of all, I wanted to finish filling in my Fracta Bird. So that's Fracta 12 from Stitching Spell. Um, and I had partially or three quarters completed the big bird and I just wanted to carry on and fill him in. So he is uh, Fracta 12 Stitching Spell from Etsy. 40 count corn straw by Country Stitch and I'm using a tweaked, tweaked the DMC a little bit, um, it amped up a few colours. This was start 35 or 50 for my 50 at 50 last year. I also mentioned um, that, you know, Fracture 12 was a really dumb name. So let's show him there. So he got all filled in. So I'm just over... Oh, I forgot, 50, I might be like 55% or something, don't quote me on that, between 50 and 60, but certainly closer to 50, because there's still a whole lot of those big flowers to do. Um, and I mentioned last week that I wanted to give him a name because Fractor 12 was a dumb name, and I asked for some suggestions for some old fashioned names, and I got a whole heap, um, so I'm just gonna read them out in no particular order. We had Chester, Cornelius, Barnabas, Perci Percival. Original got three three mentions. Original was high on the list. Archibald, um, Walter, Bertram, Jasper, Franklin, Oscar, Maurice, or Morris, depending on how you say it. Um, 
Fernando, Felix got a couple of suggestions and we had one, I did one suggestion of Philomena. Pretty early in the piece, I decided he was Cornelius. So I love all those names, I've written them down because I do have other fractors from Stitching Spell called Fractor like 10 or Fractor 5 or whatever, and they will need names. But because there's actually five little birds and one big bird, I've called him Cornelius, but I have also picked names for the others. So up here, we've got Chester. Um, over here, Oscar. This is Bertram. Um, down here, we've got Jasper. And here we've got Percy or Percival, but we won't call him Percy. Um, so I've picked those little names, so thank you. But essentially, we're main, the main bird is Cornelius. So now Fractor 12 will here both be known as Cornelius and friends, but they all have little names because they were such good names and I love all those old fashioned names. So thank you for everybody who just chipped in with some great names and I'm gonna put the others aside to name future fractors when they don't come with names like Frederick and Frederica. Um, I didn't feel like he was a Philomena, so Philomena, when one of the fractors speaks to me and needs to be called Philomena, that's, that'll be the that'll be what she'll be called. So I got that bit done. I just wanted to finish that bird off before I got too excited um, with my new start. So my new start on Sunday, um, which was New Year's Day, yeah, I started The Stitch Goddess by Tiny Modernist, and I'm doing a slight conversion of this, just tweaked a couple of the colors. Um, and I'm stitching her on 35 count ocean blue linen from Country Stitch. And this is a stitch along, start along with Judy and Ozzy in the Kiwi world. I think there's a few other um, of the Kiwi gals in the New Zealand uh, cross stitch Facebook group who are also stitching this as well. I'm going to try not to stitch her too quickly, just in the spirit of a stitch along. Now, a couple of the colours, I'm in hindsight, I might have uh, changed. In person, they're fine, they're visible. I don't know if they're going to show up on camera. Um, the light green and the greys are actually very light. But when you look at the mock-up or the model, the light green of the vine is very, like that comes along here, is very light. And the... Hedgehog looks a little bit more visible on this. I my colours look a bit more some a bit more I know, see it looks better there. The hedgehog looks better on camera, but the vine is really hard to see. So I've got all of that one side of the leaves and vine. But yeah, in person it's quite visible. I had thought about pulling out the vine and re-stitching it in something slightly darker. And I was like, nah, there's enough going on by the time we fill in all the flowers and stuff. But yeah, so I've got just that bottom grey of her dress, the hedgehog, and he still needs a nose and an eye. And I've got all that vine on that left-hand side done. I think it's about, I don't know what percentage it is. doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to leave that for this month. And then um, this will be one that I stitch a little bit on each month. But I still intend to finish it this year. But um just to give some of the other stitch along people a chance to get some stitching in as well. I do love the fabric, it's really pretty, so. Then of course, because I've got all these little goals that I'm working on, um, the other stitch along, another stitch along that I'm doing is the Cherry Parker New Zealand Flower Cross Stitch Ball. And I've sort of worked out um, bits to stitch along with this each month so that I finish it in December and I can fully finish it in December. Um, so the plan this month was just to finish off the rest of the little squares. Um, so before I show you, I'm stitching this on 25 count Lugana in white, moss green and ice blue and call for DMC. Um, and I started this on the 1st of December as my start 46 of 50. Um, last time I had the first three 
squares done and then I've just done the other three. So we've got the fern frond, the flax and the um, Potokawa flowers. Now the Potokawa flowers are long stitch, full disclosure because I'm a 99.99 stitch in hand. I did shove this in a hoop just because with long stitches, you know, they are really long. They go over what? Up to uh, one, two, three, four. So up to four stitches, um, or so over eight threads. I did put this in a hoop so that I would get nice tension on my long stitches and not end up with them too tight or too loose. Nice tension, in other words. Otherwise, yeah, so that's all of those little squares. Um, all the other patterns are not, you don't do multiples of them, they each only have one, but these are the little, um, I guess, little filler squares that you have four on each side. You've got, you, sit, you basically construct the ball in two halves, you sort of stitch and sew one half and the other half then you sew the whole thing together. Anyway, done that. So that is a great um, bit of progress. I think over the next uh, nine, whatever, over the year, each month I'm going to now do two of the hexagons a month or one of the octagons so there's I can't remember it kind of works out anyway Ta -da! and then yep there's more um I picked up a real comfort a Jane Austen sampler from Modern Folk Embroidery which I'm stitching on 40 count wood smoke by Tabby Cat using ink black this will start 48 of 50 um, so I didn't have that much done and I got quite a bit done so I finished off the alphabet there was still half the top row or most of the top row to, actually I had to finish like the I think the Y and the Z or the back of this um, row all of that row and then I got all of the little buildings in and started the centre whatchamacallit, pulled some of the borders up, so quite a bit of stitching actually in the end, um, really like this fabric, yes again still have issues with when fabric's not cut, but that's my fault for starting on the wrong side, because I knew that it was crooked, I should have counted from here, but never mind, it'll be fine, it's really pretty, so definitely over halfway, um, so shouldn't take too many more weeks to get that finished, and then, <laughs> um, I think it's only spent like one night or one day on that, um, I picked up Panoply of Peacocks, because so, this is quite a big stitch. Um, this is what this is, this is by Tempting Tangles Designs, and I'm stitching this on 40 count silver fern linen from Country Stitch, using my own silk conversion and going a little bit Drunk with power, also not stitching it exactly as the chart's called for, so I'm sort of going a bit rogue with it. This was start six of 50, and I did quite a bit on this. When I picked this, when I picked this up, it was just on 50%, and it's now on 70%. Um, and that light green is definitely more visible in person. Um, I'll put a little bit more light green on this side. So since you saw that, I finished this dark green this dark green um, one I probably was about three quarters done it to finish that off and then I put the back stitching in on that P that had been missing this little P went in um, this whole green motif and then I carried on up got to the top so got the peacock feather and the panoply of peacocks in so yeah that's just on 70% and Quite happy with that. Um, it was quite a bit of stitching. I did <sighs> spend a lot of time. Um, I watched all of, I'm gonna make up the number 1883, one of the prequels to Yellowstone. So I watched all of that yesterday. It was raining and it was cold and I don't wanna go anywhere. Um, so I watched yeah, 10 episodes yesterday and pretty much stitched on that all of yesterday. Um, 
yeah, it's pretty much a very exciting day here in the household. So thanks for coming along watching my YouTube again. I really appreciate you being here. Um, thanks in advance for any lovely comments. Thanks for the names again. I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, if you haven't, please, you know, like, subscribe, um, check out all my contact details if you need to. Get in touch with me in the doobly-doo. And as always, don't let your needles rust. Ciao.